Income Tax 2020 Tax Software Example Premium Tax Credit PTC Come in, relax with Income Tax 2020. Here we are in our Lacert Tax Software. You don't need the Lacert Tax Software to follow along, although I do believe they have a 30-day free trial. So if you can get access to a demo version or a promotional version of Tax Software, it could be a good tool to practice with. We're going to be focusing in on the Form 1040, mainly on page 2, to like a, take a look at the Premium Tax Credit and then the Form, Form 8962, Premium Tax Credit PTC. We're going to be going back and forth from the data to the form so that we can run different scenarios, the tax software making it easy to do so. We're going to start in our starting scenario with the filing status of single Eric Smith, our taxpayer living in Beverly Hills 90210. We have the 100,000 of the income. Now, of course, we're going to have to be changing that when we think about the premium tax credit, but we're just going to start at our normal kind of starting point here. Then we have the 12,400 standard deduction. We have the 87,600 for the taxable income. Then going then to page two, we have the tax then calculated. Now we're gonna be considering the premium tax credit and that's gonna be on form 8962. And then it's gonna be pulling through to schedule C part two right here on line eight for the net premium tax credit. And that's gonna be coming from form 8962. When thinking about the premium tax credit, the PTC, the form, the data input form that you're going to be needing, the one that you should be receiving from your healthcare provider is going to be the 1095A. That's going to be the health insurance marketplace statement. Now, this is only for people that have that certain type of insurance through the marketplace. You could receive other forms, which would be the 1095 possibly B or the 1095C. These two are not, if you receive a 1095B or C from your client, or yourself, that's kind of more like information about the coverage as opposed to be under a coverage plan where you may have received benefit from it and possibly be eligible then for the uh, premium tax credit. So this is the one that we're basically considering here. So in other words, if you get basically a 1095B, uh, then this is more like telling you that, that whether or not you were covered. And there's two kind of things that we're considering with the health coverage when we're filling out the tax returns. There's two types of things they're kind of trying to use the tax return to do with regards to health coverage. One is they were trying to basically impose a penalty, basically kind of like a tax, if you didn't have health coverage because of like the free rider problem and whatnot. So that would mean that you'd have to tell them that you had, you have to kind of like prove that you have health coverage or else you could be subject by either on the state level or the federal level to some kind of penalty or something like that. That's the one angle that the IRS wanted to tie in the health coverage to the taxes with. And then two, you might be eligible for the, for the credit, a premium tax credit. And for that, you would need to have this 1095A uh, form to be in the marketplace. So if you have basically coverage through work or something like that, then you might get like a, a 1095 uh, B or C that's basically just telling us you th that you were covered. So hopefully for most of the time, just on, in terms of ease of data input, if we're doing data input for say a client and we get a 1095 B, then hopefully it basically says that they were covered for the entire year. And then we can basically tell, tell the software they were covered for the entire year. So don't penalize them or anything. And we're not, and we don't have to deal with any um, tax credit or anything like that. If they get a 1095C, similar type of thing, employer provided health insurance uh, offer uh, and coverage. So hopefully this basically says that they were covered for the year. So we can mark that off and say, hey, you know, don't penalize them either on the federal or state level for not having coverage because of the free rider thing or something like that. But we don't have to deal with the credit as well. And so these two are fairly easy just from a data input standpoint. Now then when you get the 10, if you see a 1095A from the client, then what you don't do at that point is panic. You know, what you, you take a few calm breaths, deep breaths, get some coffee, and then you come back and this is the one where you're gonna have to enter some more information to deal with the credit and see whether or not, you know, the credit was overpaid or underpaid and whether it's gonna be beneficial or not, basically at this point in time at the end of the year. So this is the one where they're gonna be in the marketplace. They signed up for the marketplace, most likely then, they got some benefits, you know, you got some benefits basically with an estimate of what the credit will be at the end of the year. And they've already reduced basically the premiums during the year. Basically, the government kind of like paid the insurance companies for the premiums 
during the year and now you got to figure out what the actual credit would be and compare that to the reduction in the premium to determine whether or not more credit should be applicable or whether some payment should be paid because the, the credits that were applied were too high. So that's going to be where we are. So again, if you get one of these two, hopefully it says, you know, they were covered for the entire year or you tell the system that they weren't covered for some part of the year. And then hopefully you're not going to get penalized. If you get this one, you're dealing with the credit. So if you get one of the first two that say, hey, you're covered for the entire year, then basically you're, you're typically going to go into the to the software system and tell the software that they were covered. So for example, this is basically for the California. I'm going to tell the system, hey, they were covered for the entire year. You know, so don't, you know, don't penalize them. So that's, that's basically what you got to do for that one possibly. And again, you may, you may need it for, for state uh, level to, to show that uh, you were covered so that the, possibly the state doesn't add uh, a penalty. So that should be fairly straightforward. But this one then, now we're going to go over here to the uh, 1095A. So this is the one where they signed up for the, co the coverage in order to get the benefit, of course, of the, of the reduction of the premium, which is nice, but it's kind of complicated. So now this one's going to tell us the information uh, related to the, to the benefits that could have been received. So part two, we got the covered individuals. And then part three, this is where we have the information. They could give it basically on a monthly information. And what we have is the monthly enrolled premiums and column A and C are the main ones you're looking at. Number B says monthly second lowest cost silver plan. That's kind of basically a comparison. And then C is the monthly advance payment of the premium tax credit. Meaning this is the one C they're estimating what they think your annual tax credit will be. Basically dividing it by 12 if you had it for the entire year. And then, and then lowering your premium by what they believe the credit will be as, as the estimate has happened. So, the, so we're comparing these two. This is what the actual payment per month that the company got. Part of it was received from you, but part of it was received from the government uh, instead. And, and basically the credit is going to be applied there. So the government is kind of subsidizing that part. And that's what the credit portion is. So we need to, we need to give this information and then think about, you know, how much the credit actually is and then compare those two things out and then and then that'll figure out whether or not any money is owed or uh, returned at this point in time so let's go back on over i'm going to say okay let's go to our data input and we're going to say all right now we're not covered for the whole year we're going to the 1095 we're diving in we got our coffee going 1095 and the, so first it asks for the marketplace identifier that's on the form 1095A and the marketplace uh, assigned policy number. So that should be on the form 1095A. So that would be here and here. So I'm just going to put in a random number on those two. It's probably not, those aren't the correct digits or anything. But And then the main thing we're looking at down here is going to be the coverage information. So the coverage information and we see those same kind of three columns. Now with regards to the form then, we can just pull this information in from these three these three columns on the 1095a so we got the months we've got the monthly enrollment premiums and then uh the the second lowest cost silver and then the monthly advanced payments so i'm going to go back on over here and just enter that data as it would appear on the 1095a so i'm going to say let's just keep this at one i'm going to make it the same for all of them so i'm going to say 1000 oh that's 10,000. One. Thousand. I'm going to say that this is, let's say, 900, and I'm going to say that the advanced uh, payments were 100, meaning we got a 100 benefit per month of the 1,000. They reduced the premium for us by 100, and that's an estimate of what the full credit would be. I'm going to do this all the way down: 1,900, 100, 1,900, 100. Now, obviously, if you only had this for part of the year, then it would, you know, show on these months for the part of the year that was covered. And so 1,900, 100, 1,900, 100, 1,900, 100, 1,900, 100, 1,900, 100, and two more times. Just kind of getting into this. Got a good rhythm going here. I messed it up. Okay, so then, and then the totals then would add up to. Now note, I kind of doubled it up here because because if they were all the same like this, you wouldn't really have to enter each month. If they're different, then you got to go and enter each month. But if they were all the same, I could have just entered the totals, which would be 12,000, 10,008, and uh, the 1,002. So now let's go take a look at the forms. If I go then to the forms and I go say to then 
In this case, we have an excess of the amount of payment, and that's going to be on Schedule 2 of the 1,200. Why? Because obviously the income level is above. It's at the 100,000, which would you know basically dequal dequalify for any kind of credit here. So then on page 2, then, we see that we have the 1,200 basically increasing uh, the tax in this case. Because again, what would have happened there? We would have signed up for the coverage and basically told them that our income... Uh, they would have given us the 100 reduction in the premium or the 1200 for the year based on an income level and now our income level was higher than that and we shouldn't have got any of the benefit or the reduction of premiums and now we have to basically pay it back at this point in time if we go then to form uh 8962 there's our 100,000 100,000 we're at the uh 401 so then if I scroll down, we're going to say that uh, that full 12, 000, 1200 basically of the advancement then has to be paid back because we didn't actually qualify for the premium, uh, even though we got the premium before, you know, in 2020, in this case, we shouldn't have qualified it due to our income being over the threshold. And therefore, we owe it back in essence. So let's lower the income now. Let's say, well, what would happen then if the income wages, let's bring the wages then down to like... Uh, 30,000. 30,000. I'm going to bring our item back on over. So now uh, we have our calculation here of the 30,000. So, and I won't go in into a lot of detail on the calculation. The software helps with this calculation because it's a little bit uh, confusing, but this is basically the modified adjusted gross income, adjusted gross income with, you know, modifications, basically our income threshold that's pulling down then to line three. And then four says the federal poverty line. Now, this is going to be confusing because you can look in the instructions if you want to actually find the poverty line. If you're filling this in on your, you know, in yourself, you can look at the instructions on irs.gov for form 8962. But basically, obviously, the software would, would help with that to get the uh, 12,490. And then they're basically taking the 30,000 divided by the 12,490 to get this 240% about. So then we got this 240%. Uh, and then line seven says the application figure, uh, using your line 5%, locate your application figure on the table. And again, you'd have to look at the instructions to do this manually for this form's instructions. Obviously, again, the software is quite helpful to pull that amount from the table. And then line 8A says the annual contribution amount then, we're going to multiply line 3 times line 7. So line 3 times line 7 then is how they're getting that number. And line 3 now being the 12490 times line uh, 7.0793. And that's going to be, well, hold on, hold on a second. Line 3, 30,000 times line 7.0793 is going to be the 2379. And then B says monthly contribution amount, uh, divide line 8A uh, by 12. So then we're going to take that, that's our annual amount. We're going to take that and then divide it by 12. And that's how they're getting this 198. So 198 for the monthly amount. And then scrolling down to calculate our, our amounts here, we've got the annual enrollment premiums. So this is the amount that was, was the bottom line for the actual premiums. And then this is the annual, and this is the amount that's coming from that second column that we put the data input from. And then we got the annual contribution amount from line 8A. So we're just pulling out this, this amount, the annual contribution on down here. Then we have the annual maximum premium assistance where we're going to subtract uh, C from B. So we're going to subtract C from B. So we're taking uh, C here, which is going to be 2379 minus the 10. 800 and that's going to be our 8421 and then we have the annual premium tax credit allowed being that 8421 the annual advance payment uh, is going to be that 1200 which was the 100 reduction in the premium over the 12 months that we took a look at and the difference between those two then this is the this is the benefit the total benefit we should have got and according to this calculation of course we made up these numbers and whatnot but this is the premium that we should have got. This is basically the, the amount that we did get by reducing the premium over the year. And in this case, then the difference between the two, 7,221 is what then would flow forward to schedule three. That's flowing forward to schedule three, line eight, 7,221, which is flowing down to line 13 and then pulling forward to the form 1040 
on page two, where we got that added benefit down here of the 7221. Uh, also note that it is on the refundable portion down here. So our tax up top is at the um, 1918. This is bringing us not only down to zero, uh, but actually giving us basically a refund. So we're getting a refund of that 5,303, bringing our tax down to zero and then still getting a quote refund end quote, which is really kind of a benefit program at that point because we're getting money back beyond anything that was put in. We didn't pay any tax in, we're getting money back. Now, if you if you anything was adjusted over here so that we had a difference in the months that was were added up. So let's say like this first month was uh, something different, like uh, 700 and 700. And then we had, let's say, zero here. Then if I go back on over to the forms, that's when the totals down here might be a little bit different. Right. So now we'd have the totals are going to be different, which is going to be the one thousand. Or let's just do this. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be the twelve thousand minus three hundred, which is going to be eleven seven. So we'll say eleven seven, and then we've got the uh, ten eight. We've got uh, the ten eight minus two hundred, and that's going to be the ten six. And this would obviously be on the form. 1095A, but I'm just going to, and this could be 1100. So 1100. And then let's check that out. So if I go on back to my forms now, now we're going to go back to the forms and take a look at the form 8962. And see, now we're required to fill out the, the entire thing down here because all the months are not the same. And so that's why you have the entire two columns that are basically being filled out. So if the, whole, if the entire year was the same, then you can just do your data input into the annual totals. If your months were, were different in some way, then you're going to have to fill something like, you know, fill it out something like this in this format. Now, now again, if your income level changes, if I go back into my income level and say, okay, well, what if my income was 40,000 and then go back on over and check that out. So now that's, that's got an impact on uh, the top calculation here, 40,000. Uh, 340. So now we're at the annual amount of benefit we should get of the 3,912. If we take that on a monthly basis, 326. So then scrolling down, uh, here's the here's the 326 uh, benefit, and basically we're getting down to the the full credit of the uh, 6688 minus the 1,100 that was applied out, and that's going to give us then our 5588. If we increase the income up, let's say 50,000 and go on back on over, back on over. So now you could see we, we have lost the credit completely. So, cause we're over, we're over, we're out over the 401. So let's bring it to 45,000, 45,000. This is for a single filer. So now we're at 360. And the credit is being applied out at the 5,096, 5 meaning the credit was for 6,196. We already got a benefit of 1,1, one, one, so we have it at uh, 5,096. Let's go back on over, and let's, let's say now that, that this was back up to 1,000. And then let's say that the amount that we received was like 900. We already got like 900 of the benefit for this during the year. And I could do this just in the totals now because I'm going to make them all the same. And so then I'm going to say now we have, we have now 900 times 12. That's going to be the eight, uh, 10,008. So I'm going to say 108. So that means of the premiums of the 11.7, uh, we got a benefit already during the year by a reduction of the premium of 10.8. So then if we go back on over, once again, the, the credit is being calculated here. So we got the credit calculated and we didn't change the income level, but now we changed the benefit that we're, we got during the year. So, so now it's going to result in us owing money again. So if we go to schedule two, we got that 1,350 that are basically being owed. And then that's going to be adding to our, our line item here. So if this happens, then 
you got you, you your advice to the the client would be hey look if something like this happens you, you're saying hey look it looks like uh they they think you're they're estimating your income level to be lower than it actually is and you got to go to them and tell them and you know make the adjustment to their income level in a similar way that you might tell someone to make an adjustment uh for their w-2 uh type of withholdings so that they get this estimate uh correct <laughs>